Well, whatever your reaction to Natalie Alphick's defection, it is certainly true that she is not the first MP to cross the floor. So let's have a look back at the long tradition of Westminster defections. I know the perfect person to help us. Uh, Dr Nigel Fletcher is a political historian at King's College London and the co-founder of the Centre for Opposition Studies. Good morning, Nigel. Morning, James. First of all, on Alphick, can you remember a more surprising defection? That's a very good one. Um, I think that there have been a number that have taken people by surprise in the timing. Um, and that's one of the things about uh, these defections, is they're usually planned in secret by the person who's wanting to jump ship and the uh, usually leader of the opposition who is very keen to have them. Um, and one that, uh, that strikes me as, as being particularly uh, well-timed or badly timed, if you're the, the government, was... Um, one of the the previous uh, Labour to uh, sorry, sorry Conservative to Labour um, defections, which was Alan Howarth um, in 1995. That was uh, under John Major's government, um, and that was planned um, to to take place on the eve of the Conservative Party conference. Um, so it was you know, quite deliberate to, to try and spoil the Conservative Party conference and did a pretty good job of it um, as well. So the timing is usually very surprising, but there's usually some sign that the, the MP is uh, is unhappy or that they have some um, other reason for wanting to to defect. One of the more, more recent ones, of course, um, Christian um, Wakefield, I think, um, defecting a couple of years ago, one of the Red Wall Conservative uh, MPs. It's quite clear, really, that that, that was um, something that he was wanting to do to try and hold on to his seat, perhaps. So um, there's usually some sort of uh, lead up to it or some explanation. This one, I think, um, it's difficult to, to think of a, a parallel where it seems such an unlikely MP to jump ship to the Labour Party. Do defections matter? Do they play into a wider political narrative? I mean, does it make people sit up and take notice and think, oh, well, if they've moved from the Conservatives to Labour, let's say you're a traditional Conservative voter, maybe therefore I should move to voting Labour. Does it have that impact or is it overstated in the political bubble? Well, that's, of course, what the, the party that is receiving the defection um, wants people to think. And, I th and that's, I think, why Keir Starmer and, uh, and other leaders before him have been... Uh, quite so keen to to welcome uh, the most unlikely of, of defectors because it does say to people, well, if they can do it, um, then then surely you know there, there's no problem. And so, as he said in Prime Minister's questions yesterday, you had one week. You have a Labour, uh, a new Labour MP who's left the Conservative Party, um, Dan Poulter, after criticising them on the NHS. You have then the following week uh, now Natalie Elphick on the sort of front line of the. Uh, migrant crisis. And so that plays into a narrative and it, it is something that he wants to, to, to say to people that, you know, there is now no barrier to even, uh, you know, the most uh, hardline of Conservatives uh, voting or considering joining the Labour Party. So that's what they want people to, to make the connection of um, in, in a defection um, like that. Um, but I think there is a wider sense that in some other examples, it tells you something about what's happened to the party in either a good or a bad way. It either tells you that the party they're leaving has moved in a particular direction. And there are examples like that, like the Gang of Four in uh, 1981, leaving the Labour Party to set up the SDP. Um, you know, that was something that told you something about where the Labour Party uh, was at that time. Um, but generally speaking, when we get towards the end of a, a parliament, when people are defecting from the government, it does sort of play more into a sense of the government is in decline, people are leaving, uh, you know, the phrase rats leaving a sinking ship. That kind of sense, that it's a, a lack of confidence in the party and in the government, rather than perhaps a more specific policy reason or the fact that the party's um, shifted in a different ideological direction. Sometimes you, you hear people say that people who defect never prosper, that it doesn't do any good for their career, even though there is a kind of cynicism that, that sometimes people do it for, a, for career motives and, and they want to move to, to a, a party that's more likely to win. I suppose the flip side of that is, you know, probably the most high-profile defector of all time would be Winston Churchill, of course. He mm. went from the Conservatives to the Liberals back to the Conservatives. And, you know, even in more recent times, have there been examples of people who've defected and still gone on to have a significant frontline career? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, just, uh, just the other week, Peter Mandelson was was saying on the um, on the How to Win an Election podcast that there were a number of, of defectors who, who joined uh, the Labour Party uh, during uh, his time, during the, the rise of New Labour. 
um, and he almost made a joke of it that they they tended to end up in the House of Lords, which was was their sort of consolation. But it's not just the ermine. I mean, you do have people. Sean Woodward is, I think, yeah. probably the, the most recent example where um, he he left the Conservative Party under William Hague. Um, quite an unusual one um, that, in the sense of someone um, leaving a, a, a party in opposition rather than um, in government in that way. Um, and then he was uh, found a, a safe Labour seat and went on to be a, a Labour MP after the election, didn't go to the House of Lords, um, and indeed went on to sit in the Cabinet as uh, Northern Ireland Secretary. So um, you do have um, people who have uh, have, have uh, joined other parties and then gone on to prosper in them. Um, but others, I think it's fair to say, have found it a bit more difficult. I mean, the um, the sight of, I think, Quentin Davies going on to... <laughs> Uh, to join the Labour Party and yes. always looked a little bit uncomfortable. He went on to the House of Lords, um, but uh, you know, always looks a little bit out of place in the Labour Party, um, but perhaps not as out of place as, as Natalie Elfitt was looking yesterday. Nigel, always great to have you on the programme. Thank you so much. Political historian Dr Nigel Fletcher there. Five to six now on Thursday morning. Asma Mir and Stig Abel on the way.